Hey guys, what's going on? Gothmaster76 back with another video. So this will be a CYFD update. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, so it's going to be my birthday soon. So, you know, midnight. Um, so I might as well do this video. So basically guys, um, as of right now, I'm getting unsupervised visits. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it's pretty, it's pretty much, we you know, like I told you the first time. Um... Of that big old thing between me and my ex, um, you know, when I was getting overnights, um, the start of overnights, uh, you know, she disagreed with that and things happened. Um, so basically, that's what that's what happened. And now I'm getting my unsupervised. My kids are having fun. They like the house. You know, this is their their home, and they like their rooms, their bunk beds, you know, their snacks, everything I'm getting for the kids. And basically, right now, when it comes to court, I know everyone's been asking me when it's court. I don't know. Um, so FD is pretty much keeping us in the dark in that one. I've been told October. I don't know why it has to wait this long for October. But then again, told um, another way that basically the case will be closed and, you know, for the new school year. So I don't know what to believe with CFD. Um, so basically I have been recording throughout my journey, guys. Um, for anyone that's dealing with CUFD, you probably have a good idea what you're dealing with on a daily basis. Um, so that recording, I just have to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for blowing that, um, recording of the caseworker, um, pretty much, you know, breaking the boundaries and doing things and, Finding out more things, um, we'll get on that right now. Um, so before all this, um, before that caseworker decided to do that, and I took a chance on it, um, he was the, I'm not going to say his name, but he was the one to start it off for me to record. You know, if everything was fine, I wouldn't be recording. Um, all of us in the case, you know, the ones who were involved at, at that time in the case, he called us, and uh, you know, we were in the room, and he said if, at the time, if the house is not to my proper liking, kids will never come home. And after I heard that, I've been documenting ever since, so I have to thank him in some way because he pushed me to start recording, start going into it, like soul into it. Okay? And so basically when you're dealing with CFD guys, you always have to – you got to be smart sometimes because they're going to – use their tactics on you. They're going to pretty much have the kids kind of like against you in a way. Um, the things that I found out from my kids before that recording, before I just recorded it and I dropped it, was my kids were telling me different things. Um, this man was able to drive to his house, okay? He lived in town, so he had to drive my kids into town because, you know, they live in the same area kind of in a way. He went to his house and he was working. Use the bathroom or jacket or whatever the kids were telling me. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, um, needed the bathroom, okay, and asked him. And what I was told was he ignored her and drove her all the way to the foster parent. So there was some issues going on, and I was kind of like not happy as a parent because you're finding out that this guy that works for children is kind of like – one, I don't know why my kids were in the car, and I guess there was a teenager in the car. I don't know why he was able to watch my kids while a grown man goes to his house to drop a jacket or whatever he was doing and come back, and my daughter needed the bathroom, a child that you're working for. And he got away with it. So after that, and then it was, on, it was supervised at the time I was going to the school, okay? You guys know. And basically, my daughter... We're all walking. My son and my, my youngest daughter were going in front with the teacher. So it was me and my daughter behind. And my daughter was taking her time walking. So I asked her. This is why you ask your kids, guys. Um, I asked my daughter. She was crying. I don't want to go with him. I don't want to be in the car with him. So then I told her again what's wrong. And then she told me what was said. And then that's when the recording started began.
So basically, guys, when you download with CYFD, you always have to ask your kids if they're okay, if they're safe, or if there's any issue. Because I feel like CYFD is neglecting that because my kids were able to go through this. And my kids, they, they, they can trust me. You got to build that trust with your, ch your children. And um, sorry, guys, I'm on my medicine so i'm kind of skipping a little bit but um it's always good to build trust with your children to be able to get more things out and um it's just a lot of stuff going on guys with with my case right now i don't know what my caseworker is doing i don't know what is going on the one thing i am kind of concerned of is like your caseworker should let you know everything that's going on if they involves your children right um i found out and i'm kind of like uh, kind of upset about it. I'm kind of like disbelief that she didn't even tell me nothing. Um, that the foster parent and her, they signed adopted adoption papers. And my ex-wife told me about it and said that it's in case if I die or anything happens between my ex-wife. But I feel like there's more shady stuff going on. So this is why, guys, you always have to do these videos. This is why I do mine so you guys can have a a glimpse of what I have to deal with every day. I am happy to see my children. I love having them here. They have fun. We have great times here. We, they don't have to worry about anything. They just be kids. You know, there's no yelling going on. There's safe environment. They're having fun. And that's what I want to do for my children. So basically, when you're dealing with CFD guys, you always have to document things. Even if your kids tell you something and you don't want to believe it, please believe it. Your kids are going to tell you everything. And it's kind of sad because my kids don't even talk to the caseworkers and stuff about certain things. They come to me. Um, even though the caseworker and them say you could talk to us and stuff, they're starting to see a pattern. Um, because they went to foster home, the foster home, the foster home. And I feel like it's kind of sad because now my kids were in the system. They're learning how to not say anything. And it's kind of sad because my kids, my kids are good kids. They are, I'm trying not to cry guys, but um, they're very good kids. And to see them change, when your kids go in the system, I've been told this a lot, your kids change. They, they're not the same. And I'm working hard to get my kids back to how they were, you know, their happy smiles and stuff. And, and it, it's, it's a struggle guys. It's a struggle. I get tears, I get sadness, I get, I don't want to go, I want to stay with you. I get a lot of stuff, guys. So, I'm giving you guys this big update. Um, not trying to bore you, but I'm just trying to help the ones that are going through this. Like, really going through this. Um, I just feel like you guys have to be careful with CYFD. This is why I document. This is why I do my videos for you guys. So I can keep you guys aware. They're probably watching my channel right now. So... I might as well do what I have to do for myself and my children. So it's always good to document things. Um, perfect example for me when my kids come, I always do their hygiene, right? I cut their nails if they're long. Um, I always do that and everything else if they need anything. If I notice my daughter's hair is kind of not comb dried or whatever, I take care of it or whatever else, I always stay on top of it. So basically... This is the whole rundown, guys, I'm doing right now with COFD. I'm doing everything. I have to do my uh, psychological in July, which I can't wait to do. And um, I'm doing everything else. I'm going to my counseling. I'm getting help. I got my medicine. I'm doing everything else. And um, I'm keeping on top of it. I got my place. It's clean. I mean, I keep it up. I have OCD, so you guys know. Um, so basically this is what we do. You know, us parents are going through this. We're, we're, we're going through a lot and, um, it, do, it doesn't help that our caseworkers, they stay quiet. Um, I just hope this video can help somebody or maybe some caseworker around the world or somewhere can look at this and maybe, Hey, we need to start, you know, seeing what's going on here. Um, so I'm just hoping this video reaches somebody that's going through this. Um, I will pray for everybody. Every night I do. I pray for everyone that doesn't have to go through this. 
because it's it's stressful it's painful I mean it's very hard trust me when you have to take your kids to you know when supervised when I had to, uh, I had the worker pick them up my kids would cry um, my kids would tell me all the time dad I don't want to leave I stay longer my kids are asking about overnights already. I don't know what to say to that because we can't talk about certain things. So it's kind of like I keep telling them you can't talk about that. So just try to keep it, you know, there's not much I can do because there's no answer. My caseworker is not even giving me anything. The only thing I got from my caseworker and the other caseworker and the whatever caseworker is Arthur, we're sorry. We don't condone that behavior. But in reality, this behavior has been going on since the beginning of the case. So I'm just grateful that my kids were able to trust me enough to give me that information. And that recording was because of that. Because there was a lot of stuff going on. And if I went to my caseworker and I did not have that recording, I would have a different outcome. It would be, okay, well, that's what... Kids always say things like that, you know, kids, you know, kids, they play whatever, but this was serious and my daughter was crying and that, that was the time where I need to step up as a parent and they want us to do that, right? They want us to step up and be a parent, do what we need to do, buy things for the kids, you know, keep doing our, our parent duties. So how is it fair when a man can threaten somebody in the family and get away with it and... For him in that recording, I was so appalled. I didn't know what to say. I was just, my mind was like, wow. Like, you work for CYFD and you work for children. And then, of course, the caseworkers called me that day. I was doing yard work. And basically, you know, talking about, yeah, um, it, it's, you know, that's, you know.